Hello, sweetest potatoes. I'm going to be honest here. I haven't been honest with myself and therefore with you in a long time. On the surface, what triggered the not okayness was the loneliness that arose from moving back home across the country close to where I grew up and in with my partner as documented in the last video. But upon further reflection sparked by the latest passionate conversation with said partner that started with chore division and ended with me crying chihiro sized beads of tears i realized that maybe just maybe i haven't been okay since long before the move i've been feeling creatively stuck for years now words that used to flow so effortlessly out of my brain onto a piece of paper have since froze I assume my lack of motivation was due to burning out from drowning myself in work the previous years, so I learned to embrace slowness and give myself grace. And although this has all been tracking in the right direction, I've had a lingering suspicion that there was something buried much, much deeper. You see, for as much as I've told myself and anyone who listened on the internet over the years in some form or another that it's okay, to not be okay, I actually expected myself to be okay forever after I pulled myself out of not being okay for most of my teens through my early 20s. I made peace with loss, I found something worth living for, I no longer felt this crippling void of emptiness within, I cracked the code of life, there's no reason I shouldn't be okay. I'm alive, living, and breathing, an absolute privilege not granted to all. There's no reason I shouldn't be okay. Back then, I somehow very subconsciously convinced myself that not being okay meant that I wasn't grateful for my life. So I busied myself with nobler pursuits to ensure I was never not okay again. It wasn't until a few weeks ago when my friend Remy posted a screenshot of a book on Instagram that I made this realization. The book she posted, The Body Keeps the Score, which I'm now reading, talks about how it's normal for former addicts to get sober and turn to wellness and proceed to get addicted to the high of exercising and the sense of control. Even if the overall lifestyle is healthier, the root of addiction is still there. Why do most humans turn to substances, even recreationally? To escape. Why do most humans busy themselves with work or a specific lifestyle to also escape? So it turns out for the past 10 years, everything I did consciously and subconsciously on the deepest level was to escape and avoid feeling not okay, which means I was probably not okay for more seasons than I've admitted to myself, which has been zero since I started posting videos online. I wanted to prove to myself and others that I can be strong when I experienced loss at 17. After I worked through that grief, I believed that once I pull myself out of the darkest and loneliest period of my life that I never go back because I didn't want to seem ungrateful for my life when someone so close to me didn't have the same chance to live. Let's just take a moment here because that was a lot. Though I summarize everything in a few minutes, this realization took years in the making and while I still have many, many questions I'm working through, I thought it'd be more helpful to share how I arrived at these findings so far because we can heal as we continue to feel and be honest with ourselves. Starting with vulnerability. With yourself as I did and then with us changed i'm about to head out into the city with viv and our designer dre at like a really cute korean cafe so i'm really excited for that and yeah just to spend quality time with friends i haven't really been spending much time with people because as you guys saw my life was pretty preoccupied with the bathroom or just the house in general so i'm ready feeling good feeling ready feeling present to be a good friend and a good listener I'm a thousand percent the suffering alone and in silence type and it's so hard for me to ask for help but as I'm coming to the tail end of this transition I've found that the more I open up to friends and talk through my challenges the more I feel connected and the less I feel alone even though everyone is going through different things not being okay is a human experience that we all go through in some shade or texture and it's normal I know I talk about this all the time, but it's just so hard to open up to people when you're so used to doing everything on your own. The second is to remember how far you've come. Here's a little story time. 
So I made two huge realizations over the past couple of days. Number one being, I get so much anxiety when I drive now. And I was quite perplexed because I was like, okay, this never used to happen. Is this an age thing? Is this a unfamiliar thing? Is it all of the above? And yesterday when I was having coffee, with my friends. I was just like spewing nonsense as one does. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, maybe it's because I had so much anxiety when I used to live here that me driving and getting anxiety just like wasn't a thing. And they both looked at me and was like, wait, that may actually be it. Now that I know what calm can be, now that I know what presence can be, to not have that, I think it's a lot more apparent than when you're just sitting in it, brewing in it day after day. The baseline was anxiety. This was a very wonderful realization that showed a very tangible manifestation of my growth over the years. Just wanna give Headspace a huge shout out for sponsoring today's video and for helping me in a moment of weakness. Calmness and presence are the keystones to being okay. So if you need a bit more of both in your life like I do, Headspace is meditation made simple helping us create life-changing habits and find a healthier happier me and you i love the diverse catalog within the app you can find anything you want from any situation that you're in i literally pulled over yesterday sat there and meditated in my car i searched up anxiety played one of the guided meditations and just breathed Duh. Br breathed <laughs> for two minutes and I was good to go and then I carried on with my life. In as little as three minutes a day, Headspace can play a role in helping you increase focus, calm, get better sleep, as well as reducing stress. And this just, this is honestly every person's dream to be able to tick off four of these things in one go. So Headspace usually offers a seven day free trial, but they're able to offer us an exclusive 60 day free trial. So if this is something you're interested in, you can sign up and try out Headspace for free. And the link in my description box. The third is trusting the divine timing, going back to the driving anxiety story, remembering who I was when I used to live here over eight years ago to who I am today helped me take a huge step back to appreciate that while there's still many things I'm working through, this doesn't discredit all the work I've put in throughout the years to get me to where I am today. I really believe that the universe, God, the creator, any higher being we believe in won't provide us with challenges we can't overcome. Perhaps it was only now, with the life we've lived up until this point, that we're able to come to the realization that we're able to. So despite the discomfort, celebrate the fact that we're basically unlocking a new level in the game of life. The fourth is to keep yourself busy, including doing things you enjoy, especially doing things you enjoy as you background process, ideally in silence. Now this is different from escaping because there's the second part, which is to continue background processing while we're doing the things. And while I usually throw on a podcast or audiobook when I'm cleaning, it is through all the cleaning and tidying and silence that has allowed me to arrive at the realizations I was able to arrive at today. Fifth, in seasons of not so okayness, don't deprive yourself of play. Try small new things like me very satisfyingly recreating the $18 Hailey Bieber Spoolie at home for a fraction of the cost, or try old things with a refreshed perspective. This is my very first festival in years, and it'll probably be the last for a very long time, but I can confirm I'm much more fun now compared to when I used to partake in the partaying. Wow, this is the cleanest our place has looked since we moved in here <laughs> in April. I'm very happy. Sixth and last is presence. I will say this, it was very hard to be present while you're hosting because you're trying to cater to everyone and make sure everyone's having a good time, but I try my best here. Anyway, we always talk about being present, but reading The Body Keeps the Score has given it a new shade of meaning for me. The author, psychiatrist, and renowned post-traumatic stress researcher shared that the first thing he works on with his patient who comes in for trauma-related treatments is to help them first get back into their bodies and reacquainted with their feelings. 
Although I didn't know much about this and trauma wasn't something I thought I had even though I went through a sudden loss, feeling the bodily feels was something I worked on a lot with my coach. How are you feeling when you talk about this experience at work? You're feeling anxious? Where is it coming up in your body? If you could communicate with it, what do you think it'll say to you? What do you think it's trying to protect you from? When our session started half a year ago, I'd be fully in my rational brain thinking through all my feelings and assigning them as either good or bad. But over the years, I've learned more and more to just sit with all the feels, no matter if they're positive or negative, because they're just that. Feelings happening and processing in the present to show us something. It's not something that I need to escape or numb myself from. And perhaps this is why I was able to pick up on the crazy anxiety when I was driving. Instead of dismissing these sensations altogether, I'm learning to lean into them more to weed out the root cause of these bodily reactions. Just like how I was able to finally, after all these years, uncover the notion that I felt like I had to always be okay in order to be grateful for living, simply arriving at this realization has been able to free me of its invisible clutches. It is truly okay to not be okay. Darcy blows. I didn't hear. I didn't. Wait, can you click?